Can you talk a little bit about the hurdles to personalized medicine, uh, in particular those involved with getting diagnostics uh, approved and implemented in Europe? Well, uh, Europe is a, is, a, is a difficult place and quite different from uh, particularly the US. Um, the main issue here is that um, the regulatory approval route is not that complex at the moment. It's the CE route, which is the, uh, the CE marking route, and, um, and, and that's relatively straightforward. That's just a matter of a process getting, getting it through and making sure that your device or your tool or your test is, uh, is compliant with that. Um, but the main issue is the reimbursement. Um, reimbursement uh, is totally fragmented in Europe. We have um, obviously the 27 different member states of the EU. We have um, each country has their own uh, their own system, and uh, some are centralized, some are decentralized. And um, and it depends on, on, on private companies, insurers, whether or not they reimburse things. So it's it's a it's an incredibly difficult route to get things reimbursed. So um, those are really big hurdles in Europe. Um, and then obviously introducing things in all, all, so many different countries and so many different lang languages. But that's then still a relatively easy challenge compared to uh, to getting through getting your product reimbursed. And and I think that's the main issue. Thank you. <clears throat> Going forward, there are many players in personalized medicine, and, and we're learning more and more about how they need to interact with each other. Um, who do you think the import most important player is going forward? Uh, this is, it's been very interesting how personalized medicine actually and the acceptance of it and, and the actual the terminology and, and how, how we approach it has changed over, over the years. Um, and I think what has become clear to me um, for, for a brief period, I was, uh, I was working with uh, EpiMed, the European Personalized Medicine Association, and we analyzed all the uh, different parties involved and all the difficulties and the hurdles we, we just spoke about. And um, what became really clear is that a lot of things are very difficult to change. It needs a lot of policy and it needs a lot of uh, convincing of, of private companies and big companies and small and all these different countries um, to to make a change and um, I assessed all the different options and because I was choosing where to go next with uh, with with my new um, activities uh, as part of a new venture and I decided that actually uh, probably the biggest and most important party uh, that um, could make change in personalized medicine, uh, they are the patients. And so the patients uh, are for me uh, very much a, a bit of an untouched resource that obviously everything is about the patients. We are trying to give these patients the most optimal treatment that is then in addition to that also uh, cost effective. And um, so it makes sense to see if we can actually educate the patients, make sure that they understand what personalized medicine is about, make sure that they know what their options are and what their choices are, so that actually patients can then work together and actually be part of a team and part of a, form a partnership with their clinician and with their physicians. And so from that part, uh, point of view, I, um, I believe that the patients are very important in driving personalized medicine forward, particularly if we want to see if we can pull these new tests and new uh, therapeutics down to the people. And it, it has to be their demand that hopefully makes a difference. So that's where my current focus is on.